Hi, I'm Rebecca Rand, the Iron Cook. Watch this episode. Hence, we go on a boat ride in Santa Barbara Harbor to make a fish fillet sandwich. It's got some issues. I don't feel so well on that boat. Later, we go to Henry's Beach. How to make a tuna melt. I get attacked by birds. I have a good time making a hot dog sandwich on the wharf. And then I go hang out with a cocktail at Henry's Beach. I put all these episodes together as I jaunt around Santa Barbara, so I hope you enjoy them. Let's get out that iron. Let's go. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brand, and welcome to episode five of The Iron Cook. It's me, Iron Iron, and today's recipe is s'mores. I've had many requests on Iron Cook to develop a recipe for s'mores using an iron, which is what I'm going to do today. I have chosen a public park for accessibility, and that might be good for you too. You may decide you want to make s'mores in a park with an iron for reasons such as your barbecue had no charcoal. Electricity can be free if you play your cards right. I found an outlet and that served my purpose as well. At your municipality, you may have parks with electrical circuits that are free for publics to use. And if they're not, don't get caught. The chain of events is free electricity, plug, 100 feet of extension cord, second plug, iron. The ingredients for this dish are marshmallows, graham crackers, chocolate, foil. You need skewers, cooking spray, and an iron. Let's get started. I believe cooking with an iron is so much easier than cooking with all that charcoal for your camp out. For this recipe, we need to toast our marshmallows. I am putting three on my skewer. One, two, three. They need to be toasted. So I'm spraying one piece of foil with cooking spray. Also, you will want to spray your marshmallows. I use the central pivot method. Close your foil around your marshmallows and place your iron near the marshmallows without squishing them. I would not suggest you squish them. We want them toasted. As you're talking to your friends at your camping trip, you may tell ghost stories at this time. You may talk about good things in life and what you do in the summertime. When toasting your marshmallows, you might have some leisure time on your hands. Santa Barbara is a lovely town and we have many places to go for leisure time activities. You might consider the beautiful place where you are camping. You might consider the trees around you. You might consider children playing on play structures. You might consider fishies in nearby ponds swimming around. You might see a duck. You might want to feed the duck, but you can't do it now because you're toasting your marshmallows and you need to pay attention. You need to babysit this process of the recipe. If you have been watching all my episodes, you may have learned iron cook skills. Only what and if you're at the advanced level may you do my next move. I am moving my iron to the side. I am placing my marshmallows against the iron in a 45 degree position. Therefore, I may get ready the rest of my recipe, which is the chocolate and the graham crackers. So we open up the graham crackers and we stick our chocolate in it. I don't think this part of the recipe needs too much instruction. If you're a kid, you know this recipe. Those marshmallows tend to be slipping off the skewer. I can feel it. Let us now check. I'm opening up my foil and we're gonna see. Okay, there's some softness, but that is not toasted. They are not done. What we do here is we improvise. It might be good to have an extra torch when you make this recipe. Upon a nice roasted color, then we're gonna move our marshmallows on to our s'more. Put a lid on it. Oh man. There we go, pull it apart. Wow, wow, doesn't that look good? I'm gonna eat that. I made it with an iron. That's pretty amazing. So what did we learn? We learned we can make s'mores with an iron, but if we want them to be toasted, we better bring a match. Let's try them. Mm. Like they were made on a campfire. This is a score. Mm. So my YouTube friends, comment, what should we make next with an iron? Because we're rocking it. It's working. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Bram. Subscribe to my channel. And let's keep making great things with an iron. Like s'mores. If you've got an iron, you've got a meal. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brand, And today on Iron Cook, we're going to make a filet of fish sandwich. I am in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on a boat. I'm going to catch a fish and cook it up with an iron to make our famous recipe, filet of fish. You may have heard about that recipe once or twice in your lifetime. It's a very popular recipe and one that I've had many times. First thing you need to do is you gotta go catch that fish. Today meant taking a boat all the way through the Santa Barbara Harbor 
And look at all those nice people as they were paddle boarding and they were canoeing and they were all having a nice time. Well, I was thinking of lunch. I was thinking it's time for fish. On this boat is a cute hot dog, but he is not lunch today. The boat moves. We are on the Pacific Ocean and there are swells. I'm going to have to bait a hook to catch that fish. That may not be easy, for I might have to touch slimy things with a barbed hook. We will need to drop a line into the ocean and we will go down with our line about 120 feet according to our captain, Duane. Duane Landis is a very good captain here in the Santa Barbara Harbor and he has provided his lovely vessel for us to go fishing today to make our filet of fish sandwich. I am told we're on a reef. I am told the fish are hungry on the reef and that's why they go to the reef to eat. So therefore, we might have good luck with catching a fish today. This recipe is dependent upon catching a fish. If we do not catch a fish, we will be making grilled cheese sandwich. One needs to follow their fishing pole to where the fish are. This line wanted to be on this side of the boat, so therefore we have moved positions, an important key part in fishing. One thing about fishing, if you don't catch a fish, you don't get to eat. So I'm very motivated to catch this fish today. Sometimes I fish for hours and hours, and I never catch a fish. That was not a very good day fishing, for I like to catch fish. People do all kind of pastimes as they're fishing and waiting for that fish. They might plan their life. They might do financial planning. They might think of their next vacation to a non-fishing destination. They might consider other people having fun elsewhere. They might think of the pretty town they came to visit to fish in, like Santa Barbara, California, and like the beautiful harbor we have at Santa Barbara. They might consider wildlife near them. They might think very dark and very pessimistic thoughts, like if I don't catch this fish, I will have wasted a whole day trying to catch a fish that just wasn't to be had. So while we wait for our fish to bite so we may eat him, we may consider beautiful things that surround our lovely day. We may be considering all those people having all that fun. We may wish we were there and not on the ocean where we're about to throw up. I have a little tummy issue at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Some fishing days are better than others. We gotta go back to shore to finish our recipe today. This is a calico bass that our trusty fisher person had previously caught in case I had a disaster at sea, which is what we saw earlier in the show. We got one! Ah! <laughs> we are now going to harvest our fish. Harvesting the fish is not very hard to do. You need to whack them on the head. Ah! No, <laughs> puppy dog. You need to be careful. There is not a hot dog in the shot of the filet fish <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, ah! This is a proper way to harvest a fish. I am told. Oh my God. This part of the recipe is completed. Place your fish on your cutting board. To properly filet a fish, you cut it by the ear and you take it down through the belly, like so. The mouse is moving. I don't know. Is he dead? I'm confused. Oh boy, this is not easy. This fish fights back. There we go. And now we're gonna flip him. He gets flipped. He's quiet now. He seemed to move a little bit ago. I'm gonna hear him. Oh boy, that's not a good sight. And now we're going to cut down the meat side and leave the skin behind, for the skin has scales. This method of butchering a fish leaves us no scales to scale off that fish. We need to make our prayer circle now. This is earth to earth, dust to dust, fish to water. Say goodbye. Bing. All right. We now wash our hands for the next part of the recipe. At this part of the recipe, we turn our iron upside down to form a cooking surface. Place your cooking vessel on top of your inverted iron. We need to get corn oil on this cooking vessel in order for the fish to fry in it. Place one quarter of an inch of your cooking oil in your cooking vessel. Onto our fish, we are moistening it with the oil, for it needs to have crunch, like the filet fish that we know and love so well. Place breadcrumbs on your fish in order to provide a crunchy outer layer. You may rub them into the fish at this point. Rub that fish around in your breadcrumbs because we're ready for our fish fry. Place your fish in that hot oil. The iron needs to be on high so as to achieve a sizzling temperature in the bottom of your oil. We are now going to prepare the sandwich. You'll need a hamburger bun, one slice of American cheese, and tartar sauce. Let's flip them. I see some nice color. Look at that golden brown. That means we're arriving. We're arriving to our filet of fish. He will need to fry on each side a minimum of three minutes each. 
it is appearing that the other side is cooking just as deliciously as the first side. For accuracy purposes, we must inspect the filet of fish sandwich to make sure that we recreate it upon the same way that they created theirs. Bun, tartar sauce, fish filet, and stick to cheese. I believe that is cheese, that is a sticking mechanism. It is melted onto the filet of fish crispy wafer inside. We are now placing our cheese on our bun. And we have a bee, a little bee, go fly away home. Oh, oh, I almost got stung, oh, but he needs to go find a flower. I am not his treat today. Place a dollop of tartar sauce on the other side of that bun, and for even purposes, spread it around. I like a lot of tartar sauce, so now I'm placing the cheese on that side. Bing, there we go. You want your fish flaky and tender, so test for doneness. I think it is, done. Out it comes, and onto the cheese, because I want that cheese to melt. That's when it's really good, when it's all gooey. Place your lid on top. Bing. At this time, we need to unplug our source of electricity, lest we burn down the whole dock. Time to try it. Oh man, this fish is so flaky, it's flaking off. Mmm. <laughs> it's delicious. So I hope you try the recipe. Give me a comment, let me know what you think, and what I should cook next. Subscribe to my channel so I can make more things with an iron, like filet of fish. If you've got an iron, you've got a meal. <laughs>
That looks great. We got stick in action. It's sticking to the foil. Wait a second. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. They're almost burnt. And they're they're moving around. Okay, let's flip them. I'm not gonna take the chance. I wanna get my cameraman's leg if I were to move that foil like I did in a previous recipe. Put the lid back on and the iron for another two minutes. Then it's gonna be done. This is a very fast recipe. It only takes five to make. I see picnickers today at the beach. Well, they don't have hot dogs. I do. There are fine establishments to eat in Santa Barbara, but this is cheaper. I like this way. I'm spraying my foil. One, two, no. 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 You get none. Shut up. He listened. At least I got some power in this world. I'm not making any friends with these birds. They might get me. I've got to hurry up with this recipe. Down goes that iron on top of that sprayed foil on top of that cheese. We're going to melt that. I might have to babysit this part to make sure he doesn't slide off because he would. For time efficiency, I am now going to use my left hand to put the condiments on my bread for my sandwich today. Squeeze that mustard. I like a lot. Now it's time for the dill relish. I enjoy tomato on my hot dog sandwich and red onion. Yum. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Let's check our hot dog. Oh man, will it have worked? Okay, okay. Oh man, that looks great. It is now time to transfer the hot dogs and the melted cheese onto our sandwich. Woo, I did it. It didn't slide off. Okay, sometimes I do things right. We have success. On goes the lid. We're gonna slice it now. Let's try this. What's it look like inside? Wow, yummy. Let's try it. Oh man, that's awesome. It's gone to the birds. Oh, after Hitchcock signing off, it's Rebecca Brand. It's not a fish day, it's a bird day. See you next time. which today is a cast iron pan, and that's a very thick kind of item. The ingredients for our pancakes are an apple, because that's the apple part, flour, baking soda, and that's a little arm, and that's a little hammer, and I recognize this from when I was a child. Salt, sugar, eggs, milk, butter, and foil, a lot of foil. I always use foil. And I have toxic cooking spray as a backup, because in the past, I had some issues with that butter. Eat a half stick of butter. And he needs to melt, but apparently I'm not level to the world, for if I was, he would not be tilting to one side. I'm going to place a towel to level out my cooking surface. There we go. Cut our apple one eighth an inch thick in a pretty circle, like that. It's pretty. Flick out the seeds because you don't want any seeds in your teeth. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then stick them in the butter. He's going to pre-cook. We need to have one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And I leveled it on the top of the box. That's what the top of the box is for. In. One half teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of sugar. Sugar. We need to mix and sift, but it's an issue today because we have wind at the sunny Santa Barbara Pier and the wind is giving me trouble today. It will sift out to the wind and I'll have nothing left for my recipe. That would be trouble. So I have to be very cautious with the way I sift. I don't like sifting. At home, I often don't sift because I hate it. 
but for a light and fluffy pancake, I believe we should try sifting. And we will just do the best we can with what we have at hand, which is a very windy day on the pier. I feel done with this part. Now we need to mix in our wet ingredients. I got a trick, and that's two eggs with no shells. I got shells in there. I gotta pick them out. That's not always so easy. Blech. And we need two cups of milk. One, two. And you tell your wet ingredients to stay in their lane. You don't want any mixing action to happen until it's time. Whip those eggs, whip them good. And now we're gonna incorporate our dry mix into the wet mix. Hey, we've got baking soda, and that's gonna react, and that acts fast. So I have to act fast and cook it fast. We don't wanna lose those bubbles, cause those bubbles make it light. Now comes the fun part. It's incorporating our butter, our butter that's melted with that apple that's been soaking in it. I'm adding in two tablespoons of butter. Wet butter, melted butter onto the top. I see those bubbles. I don't want those bubbles getting away. Okay, okay, hurry, mix, mix, mix. This ain't my first rodeo, but sometimes it feels like it. We've got action, Jackson. Time to flip the apple. We need to cook the apple. The apple needs to be soft. I don't want a crunchy apple in my soft, fluffy pancakes. It's soft, that means it's cooked. I'm adding one quarter cup of pancake batter right on top. And I'm gonna hope it turns into a circle because I like my pancakes round. To match the apple, the apple's round. Now is my reflection time. I wanna reflect on my lovely time in Santa Barbara Harbor. It's so pretty here. There are all kinds of people walking about. Oh, a little boy, he caught a fish. Oh, that counts. If you're fishing and you catch a fish, that counts, even if it's small. I like visitors. Visitors are very nice. They often have stories to tell me about their lives in other parts of the country. Santa Barbara has many events that come to town. And this weekend, it was a classic motor car show. Oh my gosh, they were the most beautiful cars I've ever seen and certainly could never afford. I saw Bentleys. I saw a gunmetal Rolls Royce. I think I found the granddaddy. This is the one with all the powerful sperm. I saw Ferraris. I saw lots of Ferraris. I think Ferraris are my favorite. I like the red Ferraris. I know they're yellow too, but I like red. Well, I did not drive a Ferrari, but one day I hope to. And I happen to have met a Ferrari owner today. What's your name? Ricky Brand. Oh, Ricky Br Brand? Yeah. Oh man, he's another brand. Okay. I don't know him. He might be my brother. Are you my brother? I'm your brother. My last name is Brand. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's go. I saw Dino. Dino's the name of a Ferrari. He's no longer the name of a dinosaur. Dinosaurs are now extinct. Oh, let's check on our pancake. It's freely moving in that pool of butter. We're ready for step two. Foil cooking spray. Spray your foil with that toxic spray. Have the wind take away the fumes because you will die. Place your foil on your inverted iron and gently move the pancake onto the foil, onto the iron because I want it toasty brown. And you need to put a lid on it. Same deal. We need the cooking spray. I hate this part. Call OSHA. I can't handle this. It goes on top. One, two, three, flip. Oh, this is looking good. What happened on the other side? Oh, look at that. That worked. I love the look of that apple. Now we just wait for the other side to cook. It will cook faster, for we have removed that very thick cast iron pan. We have a round pancake. I want you to tell me what you want me to make next because I'm making it. You may have a friend that's a shut-in. That person may be stuck in a hotel room or their bedroom. They may want to get in trouble in the middle of the night with an iron. I recommend that you do this at home. This is one of those things everybody needs to know how to do, is how to cook. Well, and if all you got is an iron, use that. I want to check if we're done this. Wow, that looks great. Oh man, those birds, they want me, they know. That pancake is done. Here they come. Time to try it. Mmm, <laughs> yum. Like my recipe, and I hope you share it with your friends, because I think anybody can cook with an iron, and I'm here to show you how. Subscribe to my channel, and let's keep making great things with an iron, like apple pancakes. It works. <laughs>
dedicated to love. Her name is Goldie. I think that Pontier is a little fished out. We need to bring some more life to the party. So I found Goldie. Isn't she cute? I had a busy day today. I went down to Santa Barbara Wharf and I made tuna melts. The chain of events was I plugged in my iron. I got some non-stick foil. I buttered my bread. I sprayed that foil for safety purposes and I laid it down on that bread and I toasted the bread. And then I put in my mayonnaise, pickles, chopped some onion, and then I opened that tuna. I had to squeeze out the juice and then I poured that water into the sea because I thought those fish down there might want a little snack. I had a calamity. At this point in the recipe, you need to add salt. Well, the salt fell over and I lost the salt. I drained that tuna a little extra. I don't like soggy bread. And I combined it all in a bowl. And then I added my combined ingredients of the tuna and the mayo and the other stuff onto the bread. At that point, I added the cheese. I had to spray more, the foil, for I do not trust that it would be non-stick. Advertising always leads me astray, and you can't always depend on the label on a product. I don't believe what I read. I put the iron down. I reflected on days like today. It is so beautiful here. I'm having such a good time. While I was at the harbor, I had issues with the birds. They were attacking me, and they were attacking my food. And at some point, I gave up. I just gave them the damn food. I had enough. Besides, I wanted to get to the beach. It's a beautiful day at the beach. Standing up the wharf is fun to make my iron cooked food. I like to cure the world of iron deficiency, one recipe at a time. I need to prove to the world this can be done. You can cook anything with an iron, as I've proven today with my tuna melt sandwich. I enjoyed making a fish dish without having to catch the fish because last time I tried that, I threw up. I am a little shy to get on the boat at this time. I may not get on the boat for a very long while. So I appreciate your patience with me as I did my tried and trusty true tuna melt sandwich. I heard there was a pirate ship. I want to find a pirate. I saw these people walking around. And after making that sandwich, I thought maybe a little retail therapy would be in order. But then I thought, no, to the beach I go. I'm bringing Goldie. Goldie's with me today. Goldie's keep me company. It's lobster season and those traps are going down the water to catch spiny lobster. Oh my gosh! Wow! I'm gonna to touch him. He's a hooter. Sometimes I reflect on our beautiful seafood we have in Santa Barbara. Like a spiny lobster, it's lobster season. They took those traps out and look what they got. It's a dog day afternoon. Those dogs are everywhere. I can smell them. Come to Santa Barbara and we can have cocktails. Mm. Cheers. So signing off from sunny Santa Barbara, it's Rebecca Brand, your Santa Barbara, the Aaron Cook. Mwah. Wish you were here. Thanks for watching this episode of Iron Cook. Signing off from sunny Santa Barbara, it's Rebecca Brand, your Iron Cook. If there's any episodes here you want to see again, like you're kind of stuck on Iron Cook and want a marathon, just go to my YouTube channel. It's Rebecca Brand Recipes and hit the playlist, Iron Cook. And I have some normal cooking recipes too on my channel. But my Iron Cook is my fun one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>